Hi, I'm Gabriel Gonzalez, Heart Intelligence Coach, founder of Heart and Mind Consulting and the Academy for Applied Heart Intelligence. Today I want to talk to you about how to discover the religion of your heart. When I was a small child growing up in Venezuela, the Catholic high school that I attended celebrated Easter by staging a live theatrical representation of the Passion of the Christ. I remember dressing up as a little shepherd one year and then as a Roman soldier the next and do my best to play the part that I had been so diligently assigned by my teachers. What I've never shared with anyone up until now is that I secretly envy the guy who year after year was chosen to play the part of Jesus. He was always this lean, tall, beautiful, athletic, good-looking guy with perfect hair, perfect beard, light-colored eyes, charming personality, killer smile. Everyone just loved him, and he seemed to love everyone. You see, secretly, I longed to be like him. And I suppose the reason for this was because I was completely the opposite of this Jesus that our school theatrical play cleverly portrayed. I was shy, small, timid, insecure of myself, and terribly confused about life, religion, sexuality, people, my family, you name it. After moving to the United States, my next experience of this kind came at Canterbury School in New Milford, Connecticut when my peers staged the musical Godspell, and I just loved it. More than ever, I wish I could just be like this Jesus, that not only was long-haired, barefoot, thrower out of money changers, but he also sang and danced beautifully with the revolutionary spirit that touched everyone's hearts. I often wondered, why was this Jesus so different than the one they spoke about at church? I also wish to know how I could build a personal relationship with this dude when ultimately he and I were so freaking different. Let's not even talk about what it actually meant to be saved by him or saved from what. Each time that I asked a priest or a spiritual counselor these questions, their answers did not satisfy my curiosity. Somehow, having blind faith or trying to understand the mystery of the faith and having trust seemed like ideas and concepts that I just could not grasp. It all seemed too intellectual for me. And as a kinetic learner, I needed to feel it in my body. I needed to have an experience. And the Catholic Church was just not helping me have it. So I made a decision to leave so that I could find my own answers. Fast forward 20 years later. And after having been through the experiences of being an atheist, an agnostic, a born-again Christian, a santero, a New Age junkie, an urban shaman, a new thought minister, and a spiritual counselor, what I've come to terms with is that this thing that we call religion, as the English author Douglas Williams Gerald once said, is in the heart, not in the knees. And original Christianity, as Jesus taught it and lived it, it's ultimately the religion of my heart. This is a conclusion that I've come to after years of studying what our spiritual and mystical traditions had to say about our human hearts. And this is what I'm most passionate about these days and why I've decided to support others who are also following the path of the heart. Ralph Waldo Emerson once said that original Christianity had nothing to do with society, buildings, creeds, or dogmas. It is founded upon my unique relationship to the presence of God with heaven and earth for its beams and rafters. And so I believe that the Christ, that this Jesus that we're honoring and remembering during Easter, is not really just some cool, beautiful dude, charming guy, but rather the example of what it means to embody the presence of God in my life. This one realization has been a game changer for me. For years, I tried to find Jesus in society, in relationships, and the pursuit of success and fame without realizing that what my heart was really longing for was finding this relationship within me. This is why I believe that anyone who follows the path of the heart, what they're ultimately following is the presence of God within themselves. And as the Christians, 
we call this the Christ. As the Buddhist, you might call it the Buddha nature. If you're a Hindu, for you, it will be the Atman presence. As an atheist, you might just simply call it love. But whatever you call it, call it from within you, through and by means of your physical, emotional, and spiritual heart. Because, ultimately, that's where it lives. And in my experience, there's no faster, more effective way to do this than by doing exactly what the historical man that we call Jesus taught a small group of men and women who fervently followed him and his teaching. The prayer of the heart. In the time of the apostles of the Christ, there was a practice called the prayer of the heart, also known as the Jesus prayer. In the Jesus prayer, the words Kiri Elison, Christi Elison, Lord have mercy on me, Christ have mercy on me, are spoken or sung with an awareness of the heart while breathing consciously. In the book, The Way of the Pilgrim, written by an anonymous Russian mystic, this practice is discussed with great detail. The earliest description that we have of the Jesus prayer is by a student and companion of the Apostle Paul, Abba Philemon, who died in 54 AD. In a 6th century book called The Life of Abba Philemon, the following instructions were given. With the help of your imagination, find the place of your heart and stay there with attention. Lead the mind from the head into the heart and say, Lord Jesus Christ, have mercy on me. Quietly, with the lips or mentally, whichever is more convenient, say the prayer slowly and reverently. As much as possible, guard the attention of your mind and do not allow any thoughts to enter it. Over the centuries, this Christian practice developed further and many saints stress four basic requirements. Number one, concentration on the heart. Number two, concentration on the breath. Number three, sincere devotional emotion. And number fourth, the invocation of Jesus the Christ. Now, the first three of these are fundamental to what the Institute of Heart Math calls coherence. They're also fundamental to the practice of heart rhythm meditation, a simple and very powerful universal meditation that is taught by Susanna and Puran Baer, who founded the Institute of Applied Meditation on the Heart. To me, this is a fundamental practice for anyone who is committed to following the path of the heart. For the greater your connection with this intelligence, wisdom, and guidance of your heart, the closer you'll be to fully activating your potential in all areas of your life. In my upcoming Introduction to Apply Heart Intelligence course, I'm going to be sharing with you everything that I know about how you can access this powerful intelligence system within your own heart and teach you the basic steps to practice in heart rhythm meditation. In this blog post, if you're looking at this online, I've included both links to a live online workshop that's starting here in Cape Town on April 7th, as well as an online international workshop starting on April 9th. So whether you're a Christian or not, if you're looking to have an experience of the presence of God within you, and open your heart to the Christ, Buddha, Adman, or divine presence of love within you, I want to invite you to join me on this four-week transformational journey towards awakening the greatest potential within you. And what we Christians call Easter might just be the opportunity that you've been waiting for to resurrect or create a new version of yourself. This is what I ultimately believe the message of the crucifixion is all about. This is a time for letting go of anything that no longer works for you and set powerful new intentions that serve the bigger or greater purpose that you came here to express in this lifetime as the leader of your own life. It's time to be reborn as the leader of your own heart. I hope you found this message inspiring and that you join me on this journey. Until the next time, please take care of yourself. And as always, I send you all of my love. Bye-bye.